Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, in a recent stream the developers had a few weeks ago, we were told that another stream would be coming, one that would have significant details on Season 4, because the main topic would be the coming of a PTR, a public test realm, for the season, so they could have players test all the new features and changes ahead of time, and use all that data from the players to tweak the changes before it's released to the live game with the actual season change. This is obviously a very massive deal, it could lead to better balancing and more enjoyable seasons overall for us, but with that moment we only knew about the concept of it, so we were of course waiting for the promised stream with the information, which as it happens just ended right before I'm recording this right now. So let's talk about all the interesting information that we got today, which ranges from the actual date of the PTR itself, all the way to the details of what it will entail. Starting off then, there are some extremely important notes here that we should probably talk about Season 4 itself. The most important information for most players about this from the stream being that the season is being delayed from its original release date and will now be beginning on May 14th, the middle of May, and this is also of course the new end date for Season 3. The main reasoning for this is actually the PTR happening itself, which is a large part of the stream that we got. The PTR is going to be running for one week from April 2nd to April 9th. The delay of the season is so that the developers will have time to make changes based on the pile of player feedback they expect from the PTR. So the delay is going to be a thing, it's happening, whether we like it or not, but hopefully what it does result in is a much better season, and then it will be worth it. As far as the PTR itself then, it will only be available for PC players for now, on Battle.net specifically, though they are looking to expand it if they do more of these in the future. The PTR will also have a bunch of boosting features to make your character stronger easier, so that they can let you test later game mechanics as that's something they want you to spend more time with, given that you only have a week to actually use the PTR. Honestly, I think if you are a PC player, it's definitely going to be worth checking it out, just for the sort of unique experience that those boosting options will offer as sort of a super quick version of the Diablo 4 gameplay cycle, which should let you reach some really ridiculously powerful states really quickly, which will also let us see what the actual power cap is quite easily. Past that, then they started to share the proper changes that are coming to itemization as a whole, and these are actually massive, and in my opinion, they are all actually genuinely good changes, too. We'll have to see how the balance of the game feels, of course, with all the put together, but the actual way they have shown these changes definitely sounds promising to me. First up are basic item updates across the game, and first things first, they are removing a lot of the more hyper-specific affixes so that the pool of affixes in general for the game is smaller. Then they will be increasing the value as in the literal role potential of each of the various affixes. As well, items will be dropping with less affixes on them, with rare items in the game, the yellow items, dropping with two affixes on them, and legendary items dropping with three. This is to balance out the increased value of each individual affix and also make legendaries feel more impactful, even if the actual legendary effect on them isn't the one that you're seeking. The goal behind this being that players would probably prefer having three stronger affixes that are better for their build than four less good ones that are less particular to them because you have to have four. They've also made it possible to trade both legendary and unique items from this point forward, which is a big change that will definitely create a more interesting economy to the game as a whole and make it better for playing with your friends too. Uber uniques, however, it's worth noting, will not be tradable, which is honestly quite reasonable. As well, they are generally increasing the quality of loot across the board at level 95 or above. Legendaries will always be item power 925. Gems will work differently in the new system as well. They will have more straightforward stack gains to them and be more powerful as a whole. They are also changing the way that gear works in larger ways, including reduced item drop rates as a whole, but a general quality of gear increase when it comes to it when it actually does drop, as well as consolidation of many materials, like various region-specific herbs that were just sort of a pain to gather before to make different elixirs and stuff, but these will now all just count as a general herb for crafting purposes, so you don't have to run around to each of the different regions to grab each of the specific ones, you just need herbs as a concept, and a big one for this as well is Forgotten Souls will start dropping from much more varied places and activities, which makes them much less of a bottleneck. They will even have a rare drop chance from regular elites. As well, they are going to be making uniques start dropping as early as World Tier 1, and making uber uniques actually able to drop from any monster that is level 55 or above now, which is quite a bit more forgiving than what that was before. Then we have a massive change to the way that legendary aspects and the Codex of Power works too. Now, all legendary aspects will be a part of your Codex of Power eventually, once you've had them drop, because salvaging a legendary item adds it to your Codex. The role that you have dropped that you salvage will become the new role in your Codex, meaning you can always apply the highest role that you have ever found. Found. This is incredible and makes it much less RNG based and much less unforgiving if you want to use a legendary you've had drop, you won't be hoarding the best legendaries and the stash problems that the game has will probably alleviate significantly just from this change alone, honestly. Legendaries will also have much higher effect roll ranges on them, meaning the top end roll RNG of a legendary will be much higher, but it will be a harder thing to get than the current top roll is in the current system, which also makes sense with the addition of this new codex mechanics. Then we have a number of fully new systems being added, the first is tempering. This is a system that 
will allow you to add affixes onto your items completely, specifically one for most items, but you can add two new affixes on ancestral items, which are of course the late game items. This is done by finding items called manuals that have a list of affixes on them, then applying these to a piece of gear. It will then roll a random affix from the list of items that you apply, and it will apply that affix. Every item drops with a stat that allows you to re-roll these as well, a set number of times as well, so you aren't stuck to the first one that you get from the list, so you can try and get a different one from it. You cannot temper unique items at all, it's worth mentioning, but they do still have four affixes as they did before, and they do have effects with another new system called Greater Affixes. Every item in the game has a chance now to drop with greater affixes, and any and all of the affixes on an item that can drop can be greater, meaning up to three of them. Items will have Roman numerals on their names to represent the number of greater affixes that the item has, and what a greater affix is, is a guaranteed maximum roll of the normal affix that is also at 150% of its normal max roll value, say over 100 main stat on a wand. As an example, the third main new crafting mechanic is called Masterworking. This is a replacement for the current blacksmith equipment upgrades that we've had until now, and what this will do is upgrade all affixes on a piece of gear with each upgrade rank up to rank 12. Every four ranks, so three times along the journey, it will randomly choose one of the affixes to upgrade significantly, and it can choose the same affix multiple times, it is complete randomness. This is intended to be the sort of final step of upgrading as greater affixes happen on drop itself. Tempering adds new affixes, which you obviously want to also be upgraded by the masterwork, so the masterwork is last. Not to mention that you can actually reset your masterwork, which will still, you know, consume the materials, but it doesn't brick the item if your masterwork goes poorly. You can just keep doing it over and over. Part of this combination of systems as well is the idea that with the right ridiculous RNG that we're aiming for here, you could for sure create just an absolutely broken singular item or a broken singular build with multiple of these items that will destroy just the whole game. But it's very rare and unique to you if you can do that. So the idea is they are allowing players to break the game. They are making it much easier and much more possible to do so, but making it more unique in the way that you would have to do it and making it a much more rare thing to happen. Players will be able to have builds that can do this, but the players that will have them will be very few and far between because it will be a completely RNG thing to actually get. An example being given is if you get cooldown reduction as a greater affix, that's basically one and a half max rolls of cooldown reduction worth of that stat. But then if you also then manage to masterwork it three times on it, it just gets absolutely nuts. You get a ton of cooldown reduction and that's just from one piece of gear. What if you were to get that on multiple pieces of gear? What kind of actual build could you run using that concept? It, it definitely sounds like a really good change to me for sure. Then we have some balance changes and we are going to absolutely steamroll our way through the rest of this and their main goals are making as many actually meaningful changes as possible, which includes taking a ton of more specific legendary or unique effects or even class specific effects that mention specific kinds of skills that have generally opened up a bit. A good example being Azurath, the Barbarian Unique. Not only is this no longer only applicable to core skills, but now it is not Barbarian only either, so you can also use it on the other sword user classes as well. They've said that they are adding 10 new uniques with Season 4, as opposed to the normal 5 for a new season, and they are also adding in a new Uber Unique as well, which is Tyriel's Might. All about resistances and defense if that's the kind of thing you want from your Uber, and it's going to be in the chest play slot. They've mentioned a number of nerfs coming as well, though offset a bit by the general itemization changes that they'll be doing too, which are mostly a lot of changes to bring a Barbarian back in line a bit, I think, more than anything, and then some bug fixes for some Sorcerer interactions too. As well, Sorcerer Mastery skills will also count as core skills now, so you basically just have two sets of core skills, which makes them much more applicable to general builds as a whole, different legendary effects, things like that. Frozen Orb is also getting a great change as a skill, now exploding at the distance your cursor is set to, no matter what, and it is also getting a new unique that makes Frozen Orb spawn your Conjuration skills, but also gives your Conjuration skills a lucky hit chance for each attack to instead spawn a Frozen Orb, which then can of course cause even more Conjuration skills to happen, which fire more Frozen Orbs, and honestly, it just sounds like a really fun interaction and loop to begin with, so I'm definitely excited to see what players will do with that. Then they are also going to be upgrading things so that Necromancer minions, but also Druid Wolf companions will inherit 100% of the player's stats to make them much more meaningful in actual combat, much stronger both offensively and defensively, so they can probably actually survive in late game. And Necromancer specifically is getting a bunch of Book of the Dead upgrades, such as getting cooldown reduction from Reapers, vulnerable application from their Cold Mage attacks so they can use that as their main source of vulnerable, or even getting a pull on enemies with their Golem's attacks, not to mention that the Golem's active ability itself will now also grant Unstoppable to Necromancer, which is very big for them as a class. On top of this, they are making some changes to some underused things, including changing Dust Devils and general flat damage effects like Stun Grenades to be much stronger too. They are changing underused ultimate skills, underused key passives, just lots of good switch ups all over the place, with the full patch notes on this actually coming at some point next week. Then we have the changes that they are making to the end game that we can expect to see, starting with 
larger experience bonuses for players in World Tier 3 and World Tier 4 to make it easier to get to actually higher levels and make it more rewarding for the more difficult experience, but then also a number of changes to Helltide as an endgame mechanic, making it actually pop up in World Tier 1 and 2 so it's no longer just an endgame mechanic. It will have higher mob density across the board in general, and also add a new mechanic of a threat meter that will build when you kill monsters that will summon in a new type of enemy called a Hellborn when it fills up. Essentially, this is just a reskin of the Vampiric Elites and how they worked from Season 2 in the Blood Harvest event, and they drop rare summoning materials for a new Helltide event boss called the Blood Maiden, so just a general Helltide overhaul as a whole. There is also going to be a new uber endgame boss added to the pool, which is Andariel, who will be summoned by materials that are dropped from the Beast and Ice boss, as well as Lord Zir. Andariel will have an identical drop table of items to Duriel, so it's mostly just a choice of which one of the two you would want to fight personally for the same purposes, or which materials you prefer to farm, honestly. There is also going to be a system where you can spend Stygian Stones, which are a new currency, to fight higher level versions of each of these boss fights, more difficult encounters that have better drop rates on their rarer items, including for the uber bosses, increasing their chances of dropping uber uniques by increasing how hard they are to fight. And if this actually applies in any meaningful way with any meaningful percentage of increase, this will actually be massive, allowing the players that are strong enough to trivialize these bosses to actually make a meaningful challenge again, but only if the drop rate actually increases enough to make it worth it. On top of that, once you beat each of the end game bosses at a high enough level through the system, they will actually give you a resplendent spark, so you should be able to craft at least one uber unique for free, guaranteed, each season if you follow through with this system. As for the Stygian Stones then, the currency for this, they drop from our other new endgame activity, which is called the Artificer's Pit. This unlocks once you have completed a tier 45 Nightmare Dungeon and has level 100 monsters in it as a base. This activity will have hundreds of potential different levels you can complete it at. You collect rune shards by completing various other activities in the game, even from things like just killing elites, general elites, anywhere, and then you bring these items to Saragar to start a pit run. Earlier levels are around level 100 enemies, not overly challenging, but it can reach up to level 200 or even level 250 enemies and beyond, bringing you past the potential difficulty cap of even Abattoir of Zir, which is what this activity is actually pretty much completely based off of. Essentially, this is the same bones of the Abattoir, but far less punishing as a whole. If you die, you have 30 seconds lost from your timer rather than just having to run to the end. If you don't make the timer, you still do get rewarded at the end, you still can't finish it, but you don't get the mastery rewards. The mastery rewards from this activity are actually how you get masterwork crafting materials, which is another new mechanic that we actually talked about earlier in the video. Higher levels of this activity will give you higher amounts of these materials as well, letting you repeatedly roll your masterworking progress and reset them, aiming for your absolutely perfect endgame gear. And that pretty much does it then, everyone. We actually don't even know anything about the specific season mechanic for season 4 yet. This has all just been general additions to the game itself that will persist past the season, so the seasonal mechanic itself is just still completely up in the air, honestly. But while I will still reserve proper judgment for all this until I've gotten my own hands on the PTR, or even the full season 4 release, I will say that pretty much every change here that they mentioned sounds genuinely positive, and that they have done a number of more impactful changes within this too. Not just statistical or numerical changes this time around, but straight up different design philosophies are clearly at play now across the items as a whole that really seems to be promising to me. They seem more exciting, more entertaining, genuinely. But what do you all think? Let me know down in the comments below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye